Here's a little help with Java if statement worksheet number two. In number one, we need to write an if statement that displays a certain message. So just beginning to learn how to use if statements in Java, the word lowercase if, you need to use parentheses with the control expression. It's good style to use curly braces around the body statements of the if. Okay, what are they telling us to do? Well, we're supposed to display something. So if something is true, we're supposed to system out print something. Okay, um, and we're supposed to system out print one digit is even. So that's that. Don't forget your semicolon there, <clears throat> but do not put a semicolon up here. Okay, what's the control expression? If, if, num is an even number. Well, we learned this in the prerequisite course, Visual Basic. If you mod something by two, and in Java, the mod operator is the percent sign. If you take a variable such as num and you mod it by two, if the remainder is zero, then indeed you have a even number on your hands. And any even number ends with its ones digit being an even number, like 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. And I'm considering 0 to be even here for, the, uh, for this problem. So we just need an equal symbol here. But in Java, you need to type it out as a double equal symbol. So there you go. This is a nice, tidy control expression here. And uh, this would work. See the lecture notes for algorithms such as this one that we used uh, to check if something is even or odd. I have many other good handy algorithms in the lecture notes, uh, so read that. Number two, we're checking to see if the tens digit is odd. Well, uh, we have the same uh, setup here. We have an if statement, and we're going to be system out printing something. You can do that. I'm just abbreviating system out print. Tens digit is odd. I don't have time for this, but you do. OK, the control expression. How can we tell if the variable num, such as the number uh, 213, how can we tell if that tens digit is odd or even? Well, first we have to take the variable, in this case num, and we have to chop it down. Let's do this. Somewhere in the lecture notes, you've learned that when you mod something by 100, it gives you these two digits right here. You can check it out for yourself, but the remainder of 213 divided by 100, the remainder there ends up being 13. So uh, we now have 13. This right here uh, simplifies. In this example, using the number one. Uh, 213. This right here is the value 13. But we want to know if that 1 is an odd number or not. Well, we have to take it a step further. Yes, I could use extra variables and stuff like that, but I'm just going to do it all in one control expression here. Um, let's just uh, divide this by 10. Taking advantage of integer division, 13 divided by 10, do not say that that's 1.3. The 0.3 gets chopped off because this over here is an integer, and this bottom half of the fraction is, a, is an integer. When you have an integer divided by an integer, the decimal places get chopped off. So we now are left with the number 1 from all, all of this. All of this is really just the number 1. And we no, want to know whether it is odd or not. So let's just mod it by 2 and check to see if the remainder is 1. If all of this is true, then we do know that the tens digit is odd, like the number 213 would work in here. Or thousands digit is 3, so at some point, even if uh, your answer is uh, 
well, just read through the lecture notes, take the algorithms that work for smaller numbers, and figure out how to make it work for problem number four. It's going to look something like this, num mod 1000, and then there's other stuff. If you, num, if you mod num by 10,000, even the number like this is changed into a big number. Uh, it's the four digits right here, or the leftover amount when we have a, a num mod 10,000 in this case. So if we have the number 5,678, we need to check to see if that thousand digit, if the five, is the number three or not. So we can, can we uh, do something here with math.floor or, or maybe typecast to an integer? Well, I'll let this up to you, but this was a 10,000. And I don't want to give you the answer, but um, somewhere in your answer you're going to have double equals three probably. Somewhere in your answer, you're going to divide by some number, a one with a lot of zeros. And uh, you're going to use curly braces and the word if and all of that. Good luck. And uh, number five, that's not hard. Think of it uh, this way. The number 12,321, and then this number over here. We need to use mod and dividing by big numbers like 100, 1,000. And we need to break this apart in a way that we need to see if that number, the 1,000th digit here, matches the 10th digit here. This big uh, number out here uh, uh, in the 10,000th column, that will need to be matched here. This number that's in the ones column will match up with the number in the maximum column here in our original number, and so on. Once you're done with all that, you'll have an answer here that can return true or false, depending on what the case may be. So you might have return true inside the curly braces, then outside of it, return false. Good luck.